Welcome to the bond analysis. Something happened yesterday and I want us to interrogate and find out what is the interpretation. Yesterday at 7 a.m. the agriculture CS Mithika Linturi was driven straight to the DCI offices. And according to what was discussed or rather what was reported was that the CS was being interrogated or rather on relation to the fake fertilizer scam. Remember this scam, this came a day after parliament approved, uh, voted to support impeachment proceedings that were supposed to go on, on uh, uh, touching on mythical injury. So that was at 7 a.m. And that is why in the morning there was some news that was spreading and, and confirmed news that he was arrested. He was not arrested. He, he was driven directly by his official car to DCA offices. And so Mithikal Inturi has been facing these allegations on his hand on the fake fertilizer scandal. The board desk has insisted that he is not exclusively in it. We must dig deep and bring everyone who is individually culpable for the mess. But then at one, uh, the president, William Ruto, uh, team dispatched their communication, media invite, that they were going to hold a press briefing in State House at 1 p.m. Then that presser, State of the Nation address, was postponed to around 2 p.m. So after that postponement, to the shock of many, how a cabinet secretary who was grilled for seven hours drove himself, was driven, and managed to clear the traffic his way and arrived in State House to attend the State of the Nation address is shocking. In fact, what do you think that image communicated to the MPs? A cabinet secretary who is facing impeachment in the National Assembly is summoned by the DCI the very day when president is supposed to hold a press of state of the nation address. This is mythical in two seated in that event in state house. This is the man who is facing impeachment motion in parliament. So tell me, do you want to believe that um, this, there is anything going on like impeachment on him? Because, and I think someone brought this to my attention. If this man is already a man who is guilty, he's on the hanging line. Do you think he was a must to be there? And, if, and, and another thing just to explain to you, where there is some, um, whatever is happening in parliament is just a, a drama. William Ruto, knowing very well that that cabinet secretary, his reputation is already soiled, he's one of the MPs, he's one of the, 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 the CSS that was given responsibility on distribution of relief food to people affected by the floods. Programs is directed to work with development partners and relevant humanitarian organizations to mobilize adequate food and food supplies to support all affected persons in every part of the country. The Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development through the National Cereals and Produce Board is directed to make available food supplies in government stores to support this effort. The Ministry of Health is directed to work with development partners including the World Health Organization, AMREF, Red Cross, UNHCR, World Food Program, and other relevant humanitarian agencies to mobilize resources and logistical support to avail essential drugs, food, and other medical supplies to those affected. The Ministry of Interior is directed to coordinate the relocation and evacuation of the affected members of the public identification of sites for temporary shelter for displaced persons and supervise the overall support
program. The Ministry of Education is directed to postpone the dates of reopening of all schools in the country for the second term until further notice. That is William Ruto giving roles to Mithika Linturi, a man who was already being grilled by the DCF for seven hours. I agree with those who say that he was not even being grilled. In fact, he was just spending time there. Those are his juniors. Those are his juniors, by the way. To see the those, those inspectorates there at DCI. Those are his juniors. Those are people who arrived there and were saluting. There was even no investigation going on. But there was another twist to it. You could see the way when the impeachment motion was to be in parliament, a number of Kikuyu MPs were supporting him not to be impeached. And some also was for the impeachment. I've even seen our Mawa MP saying after him they are going to for Nakumicha. And so the Kalenjin wing, uh, MPs on the Kalenjin wing, allegedly were under instruction to support him. But when they went to parliament, they voted, quite a number of them voted for the impeachment of C.S. Linturi. And that created an image that perhaps maybe, you know, maybe, there was just some thoughts of maybe, maybe. However, this is a clear point. Some two, uh, some three other developments have also come through. As the 11 member committee is formed, John Badi and um, the Red MP, uh, the Red MP, the John Badi, then the Red MP, Otia Deamolo, was saying that the move of the motion, Jack Wamboka, was supposed to be given the liberty of choosing who is to be there. From the one go, the list of MPs who are members of that 11 member team was consolidated from minority and majority team. And the majority list was delayed because consultations were made within the party ranks, even to the deputy president and to the president, on who and who was supposed to be in that committee. That's number one. William Ruto has also been uh, reported behind the scene pushing for a mooted move that the first sitting of that uh, committee to actually arrive at a position that DCI and Parliamentary Committee on Agriculture that have been investigating that fertilizer scandal be given time to finalize the report so that when they finalize their report, the parliament will use the reports from the two. The DCA is investigating, and including some NCBB officials have also been arrested and charged. And the Agriculture Committee, on, the com Parliament Committee on Agriculture is also investigating. So that when the two bring their reports to parliament, then the committee will vote on it. What is happening here? that there are behind the scene efforts to try to salvage the impeachment of Mithika Lintori. So let me explain why, contrary to a public opinion, that if Mithika Lintori is impeached, then maybe it shall have saved the image. I also said here, it might have it, it has a potential of bringing that fertilizer scandal thing to a finality. But Mithika Linturi facing impeachment is a trap that William Ruto are not seeing him accepting. That's why he's finding all the strategies to stop the impeachment motion against Mithika Linturi. Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and like our videos thank you very much for your support and also i believe that all we are putting together is to ensure that uh, we do the best number one i think william ruto understands 
that the male wing, the Kenya East wing, Amitika Linturi is an integral leader on the other, other end. And because the Meru leaders have been against Kawira Mwangaza, and if uh, Mithika is kicked out of government, then he will likely form an anti ruto battalion from Meru. Number two, Mithika, Ka Kawira Mwangaza has joined UDA. So she's angling the UDA ticket. She's actually coming out to be the person to be the chairman UDA in Meru. But those Meru men, the all wrong Meru men, would actually consolidate against Mithika Linturi. And it will still be even worsened if Mithika Linturi also forms an alliance with Peter Munya. So there is a threat of Meru East that William Ruto fears most. The right thing would be to suck um, to suck Mithika, to let Mithika off. But that will not be allowed because of that contentious Meru vote. Remember, even during Uhuru Kenyatta's era, Moses um, Peter Munya was the agriculture CS. And then when, and that is from Meru, then when Ruto came, he took again that position to Meru. So if you drop Mithika, there is a temptation to pick another person from there. And that is a big problem that William Ruto fears. Number one, that is number one. Number two, I think William Ruto understands that if impeachment becomes the presidents of the parliament to remove members in cabinet, then many other cabinet members will actually be living through those impeachments. And if a cabinet, uh, and, and, and that will be it because I wanted to listen to Mary Wama who was saying, after Mithika, we are coming for you. And this is, um, this is Mary Wamaua. Now, there is just one other aspect, an angle of it. That if he allows it to happen, then many other cabinet members will actually leave, will actually be ejected. And there is a likelihood that the UDA could be infiltrated and it would really cause exodus or rather insecurity of tenure in his cabinet. Moses Kuria, uh, Kidiki, Nakumisha, quite a number of them would be facing the sack. The other thing I'm seeing here is, and let me just tell you, in April, not in April, in January, there was a leaked memo that one cabinet member, and by then it was highly uh, reported that it was um, Jogun Dung on Treasury, had written a letter demanding to resign from Ruto's cabinet. And Ruto had to find ways of mending it so that it doesn't leave. If someone is to leave cabinet, if he is to eject someone from cabinet, Ruto is the president who wants all the credits. He will not use impeachment. He will himself sunk. So that comes to public and says, I have. Through that, the public will clap for him. So if anyone is to leave, that person cannot leave through impeachment. That person has to leave through William Ruto himself. And that is why any sort of that impeachment, the behind the scene move to stop that impeachment. Number four, the motion came from Azimio. The impeachment motion came from Azimio. And was it a case, it was a case that Azimio had already, already government in public, the Kenya Kwanza had failed even to protect Mithika Linturi. Because what was the kind of hivi na hivi. 
So already there was a problem that across even Kenya Council supporters believed that mythical Nturi needed to be shown the door. So when that impeachment motion was brought, it is brought, it was brought at a time where everyone is mad at Waziri. And so it was evident that mythical Nturi was going to be shown the door. So what then happened is that he just realized that MPs are at you know at a situation where they can impeach him. The reason why he would not want Waziri to be impeached. If Mythical Nturi is impeached today, and I hope so, the next newspaper headline will be telling us the truth about what happened. Because there are fellows and powerfully connected people. The fertilizer scandal is a huge thing. It's not something that can be eaten by one minister there. There are so many other powerfully connected people here. And he will not dare, he will actually believe that if he's within government, he cannot leak. But the next day, if he is out of government, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a big problem. And many people see it as an opportunity to, for Waziri to speak the truth. If Ruto allows that impeachment to proceed, he knows very well that Mithika Linturi is going to spill the beans. And that is why, even in terms of all this, Mithika Linturi went, left this year and sneaked to State House and was even given roles despite the fact that his reputation is already soiled. On this one, I rest my case. I still, I beg to be challenged. And um, our desk here, maybe if things change, I still maintain he's not going to be impeached because William Ruto doesn't seem to support that impeachment. Thank you.